Hi there, Tom Altman. We're doing the New York State Regents Physics exam. This is the June 2011 exam. We're going to start with page two. Question one. Scalar is to vector. Well, scalar is a concept that just has the number. A vector is that number with direction. Or an arrow. So they're looking for the number and then the component that would be a vector. So speed is to velocity. Well, speed is a scalar. Velocity is the vector. That would be the right answer. Displacement to distance. The other way around would be, uh, this is the vector to scalar. Displacement to velocity, indirectly related. Speed to distance, also indirectly related. So all wrong answers. Question two, if a car accelerates uniformly from rest to 15 meters per second over a distance of 100 meters. So acceleration, uh, velocity initial is zero, velocity final is 15 meters per second. Distance traveled is 100 meters. They're looking for acceleration. No, right off the bat, they're giving you a math problem. And here's the equation, velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2AD. So uh, velocity final squared equals, well, velocity initial is zero, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, velocity final squared equals 2AD. And so I'm looking for what? Acceleration. So velocity final squared divided by 2D will give me my acceleration. And according to my calculator, this is the correct answer. Question three, an object accelerates uniformly from 3 meters per second east to 8 meters per second east. So I go from 3 meters per second to 8 meters per second. We're just looking at that, that's going to be a change of uh, what? A change in velocity of uh, 5 meters per second. And 2 seconds, so time is going to be 2 seconds. What's the acceleration? Acceleration is change of velocity over time. So 5 divided by 2. Question 4. A rock is dropped from a bridge. What happens to the magnitude of the acceleration and the speed as it falls? Well, before we start looking at the answers, let's think about it. I drop something off a cliff. What causes it to fall at all? Well, the acceleration due to gravity, and that will remain unchanged. So let's go find answers for which the acceleration is correct. See, one, both acceleration and speed increase. That's not true. Acceleration will remain the same. Both acceleration and speed remain the same. All right, that might work. Acceleration increases. That can't work. Acceleration remains the same. Now let's think about the velocity. Uh, as you drop an object, it picks up speed. The velocity increases. So both acceleration and speed remain the same. That's not true because the speed doesn't remain the same. Acceleration remains the same and speed increases. That's the correct answer. Question five, a soccer ball kicked on a level field has an initial vertical velocity. Let's see, horizontal and vertical. So the vertical component's gonna be 15 meters per second. Assuming the ball lands at the same height from which it was kicked, what's the total time the ball is in the air? Well, we don't care what the horizontal velocity is because that uh, just determines how far it goes. Going up in the air is the total time in the air. Well, it's going to go up at 15 meters per second. It'll eventually stop when it reaches the top. And then it's going to come down. Velocity uh, final, again, when it lands, is going to be negative 15 meters per second. So the total change in velocity for this thing is going to be 30 meters per second, from upwards at 15 to downwards at 15. It will change that velocity because of the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm going to call about... Uh, uh, 10 meters per second squared. And so if acceleration is changing velocity over time, then time has got to be a uh, change in velocity divided by acceleration, 30 divided by 10, I'm looking for about three seconds. Question six, a student is standing in an elevator that is accelerating downwards. Uh, here's the elevator. If uh, they were staying stationary, it was just parked or traveling at a constant velocity, they'd be in there. But it's accelerating downwards, which means they're going to be kind of lighter. So the floor, the student exerts a f uh, on the floor of the elevator must be, so the force downwards 
So basically they're asking about the pressure and it's going to be less in the weight of the student. If it was accelerating downwards. If it was accelerating upwards, it would be greater. Less than the force of the floor on the student. The force that the student exerts on the floor must be less than the weight. Okay? It's going to be equal to the force of the floor on the student. Well, that's an interesting uh, option. Greater than the force, um, that would be if it was accelerating upwards. Question seven, the magnitude of the centripetal force acting on an object traveling in a horizontal circle path will decrease. Let's go find centripetal uh, force. Force centripetal is mass times acceleration centripetal, and acceleration centripetal is V squared over R. So I can say that my force centripetal is equal to MV squared over R. So I want the centripetal force to decrease. So I could decrease my mass, decrease my velocity, or increase my radius. Radius of the path is increased. That will work. Mass is increased. Nope. Direction of motion of the object is reversed. Now this is going to be in the opposite direction. Speed of the object is increased. No, that will increase the centripetal force. It's always good with these kind of choices is to go find the correct answer first and then find it of the choices. Rather than trying to look at these and figure out which one's right, know which one is right, and then go find it. Question eight, the centripetal force acting on the space shuttle as it orbits Earth is equal to the shuttle's... Well, it works like this. Centripetal force pulling it in. It's in perfect balance, so the centripetal force must be equal to the weight of the object. Now well, let's look at the possible choices. Inertia, inertia is mass. We're looking for a force, that won't be right. Momentum, that's not force. Velocity, that's not a force. Weight is the only option given to us that's even a force. So uh, that has to be the correct answer. Question nine is a box is pushed 30 meters across a horizontal floor by a constant horizontal force of 25 newtons. So let's do this. Uh, distance is 30 meters. Uh, force is 25 newtons. The kinetic energy of the box increases by 3,000 or 300 joules. So a change in kinetic energy of 300 joules. How much total internal energy is produced during this process? It's a trick. Uh, the internal energy is heat. So let's think about this. Well, the way to do these is to determine initially how much work did I do. Work is... Well, Work is uh, force times distance. So it's going to be 25 newtons times uh, 30 meters. So 3 times 25 is 75 at a zero. 750 joules of work. I did 750 joules of work to it. It's a flat surface, so it didn't gain any potential energy. It gained 300 joules of kinetic. So it's moving faster. Well, so 750 minus 300 is about 450 joules of extra energy, which must have gone to heat. And finally for this page, question 10. What is the power output of an electric motor that lifts, say, the mass is 2 kilograms? Keep in mind it's lifting it, so that it means it has to fight the pull of gravity. Uh, and it does it a distance of 15 meters. And it does it in a time of six seconds. All right, and power, and I go find. Now it talks about it being an electric motor, but uh, it's doing mechanical work. It's lifting a weight, a mechanical distance. So I'm going to find my work equations. Work is, uh, or power is work divided by time, which is force times distance divided by time. Well, let's see. If uh, power is work divided by time, force times distance divided by time, in this case, force is mg divided by time. Well, I've got mass of 2 times g, which is, let's call it 10, so that's 20. Uh, distance of 15, so that's, what, 300 meters, divided by 6. So I'm looking at uh, 300 divided by 6, so maybe 50-ish. Well, look at this. First of all, I'm looking for power, so I need watts. So these two are wrong to begin with. So it's either 5 watts or 50 watts. I'm going with 50 watts.